Hello everyone and welcome to your first Workbench tutorial where we're going to be exploring the Supply Last Active One Year metric. We're going to use this as a base because it provides us with a very, very big picture macro cyclical behavior in terms of supply, but we can also really understand what's going on with the market sentiment by looking at the change in this metric. So there's a few opportunities to really just understand the fundamentals of Workbench and build a net position change using this metric to fully understand what is going on at a more granular level. So in this particular tutorial, we're going to explore this fundamental toolkit on how we can actually use Workbench to create new metrics, to identify new insights, and really try and go a little bit deeper than just the metrics themselves. So for this particular model, we're going to start with the supply last active one year. This is the total percentage of circulating supply that is older than one year. Now, as you may be familiar, when we see these older coins, it generally shows that Bitcoin has a stronger set of hands. It's generally a fairly constructive sign when this metric is high or increasing. And the converse of that, meaning the coins younger than one year, when that's growing in population, that's telling us the other side of the equation, that those older hands are actually spending their older coins. And as a result, we have an influx of new buyers, which generally increases the probability of some kind of market top. So during this process, we're going to step through and build our first set of metrics. We're going to add all of these tools to our workbench, put them onto the correct axis and scale, and just understand what the fundamental tool set is for workbench. We're then going to convert our supply in percent, which is what the base level of the supply last active is in a percent of circulating. We're going to convert that into a BTC volume so we can see it and compare it to things like our circulating supply. And we're then going to construct a new metric called coins younger than one year, which is essentially the inverse or the opposite side of the equation to our supply last active, or in other words, supply older than one year. And then we're going to close out this session by looking at the supply net position change. We're actually going to calculate one of these. There's a number of these style of metrics inside uh, Glassnode suite themselves. So this will give you a bit of insight to how we actually calculate those depending on the different input metrics. And it gives you a bit more tools that you can go ahead and actually build your own net position changes when you find something that might be interesting or a metric set that may not have been explored yet. Now for this particular session it is targeted at beginners, so anybody with any skill level will get something from this. This really is starting at ground zero, so I do hope you enjoy this, uh, this workbench tutorial. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start off here with a brand new workbench where we don't have any metrics applied, and we really are going to build this up from the ground zero. So as you'll often do, the first metric that we're going to add is price. And this is really, it's almost the calendar of Bitcoin. We want to see whereabouts we are in the cycle. I will typically set mine to some kind of medium gray and turn it onto a log scale. Now, what you'll see is it's currently assigned to Y axis Y1, which is on the left hand side. We can change this to a bar chart if we want to, to find that area kind of style. But in this case, we're going to keep it as a line. And on these axes, you'll note that over time, when we add more metrics, let's add our, our second metric here, it will pop onto Y2 and the next one onto Y3. So we do have to adjust these as we go. So the first metric that we're going to add is circulating supply. Now, there's a few reasons uh, for this. The first one is obviously the circulating supply is the maximum cap of coins. And what we really care about is how many of those are older or younger than one year. So here I've set this onto Y2, and I'm going to keep all of my supply in BTC terms put onto the Y2 axis. So just remember this, our Y2 axis, which is on the right-hand side because it's an even number, that will always be our supply in BTC style metrics. Now, what you'll see is that we have price here as M1 and circulating supply as M2, and that will continue to tick higher as we add more and more metrics. So the next one we're going to apply is our one plus metric. This is looking at our supply last active one year ago. Now, just remember that this here is presented as a percentage. It is not in terms of BTC. You'll see here, if we hover our cursor over it, we can see that at the top here, it's about 60.7%. And that's saying it's a percentage of our circulating supply. So we know that we can't actually map that if we put this onto our Y2 axis. Because our circulating supply is just over 19 million at the moment, we can see that as a percentage, it disappears towards nothing because it's less than one. So it can't really be compared directly to our circulating supply. Now, this is where we're going to step in and actually build our first formula. And the objective, what we're trying to do here is we're bringing this supply last active, which is a percent of circulating. 
we're going to bring that into the BTC supply realm. So because we're putting it onto the BTC supply axis, we're going to go to Y2. Remember, that's where we've got circulating supply. And our end result is we want to compare supply last active to circulating. So we're also going to change the color of this to a blue color. And I'm actually going to just turn off the legend of the percent sign. And what I will first do is often I will rename this metric because quite often when you start playing around in Workbench, you add a bunch of formulas and you forget what you're trying to do. So the first thing I'm going to call this is supply older than one year. So what you'll see with formula editor is up here, we've got our M1, M2, and M3, which represents price, circulating supply, and supply last active and percent respectively. Now, what we want to do is take that percentage of supply, which is our M3 metric, and we're going to multiply it by M2, which is our circulating supply. So if we have, say, for example, 60% of the supply that is older than one year, when we multiply that by circulating, it's going to bring it into the BTC realm. Now, we're going to keep all of the rest of the settings the same and hit evaluate and draw. And what we can now see is that our supply older than one year is now mapped onto the same axis on the right hand side here and is the same scale as our circulating supply. So we can actually see that during those bearish markets, or during the, uh, the market top, sorry, we see this decline in circulate in supply older than one year. This is older hand spending. During bearish markets, we see that reaccumulation commence and those older hands start accumulating and putting those coins into cold storage until we break the all-time high and they start spending again. So we can see this very, very cyclical behavior that we have coming from the supply last active. So what we're next going to do is add another formula here, and we're going to look at the converse of that. So the blue curve is showing us the supply that's older than one year. We've taken our supply last active one year ago, multiplied it by circulating, and that gives us our supply that is older than one year. Now, what we're going to do for this metric is I'm going to turn this to a ready pink color, and I'm going to put it also onto our Y2 axis, because again, we're bringing this into the supply domain. And what we're going to do with this metric is the opposite. We're going to say supply younger than one year. So what we're looking at here is essentially, you may have heard the term long-term holder and short-term holder. We're essentially establishing something that is very similar to this, but using only the supply last active at the one year. So that one year is the threshold that we're selecting in this instance to represent that long-term or short-term type holder. So to calculate the coins younger than one year, we essentially take our circulating supply, which is all of the coins in existence, and we're simply going to subtract, in this instance, F1, which is the calculation that we did for the supply older than. Because if we have our total circulating supply and we subtract all the coins that are older than one year, then by default, we are left with only the coins that are younger than one year. So here we can see we essentially have the exact opposite during periods of time when our supply older than one year. Remember that generally speaking, that when we want to have older coins, there's a lot more old coins in the system. It's a more bullish signal. It typically happens during bear markets when that accumulation is taking place, but it does tend to lead to a supply squeeze eventually. So you can see that the supply younger than one year is equal and opposite. It will decline during those bearish markets as Old of people with stronger hands come in and buy hand coins off speculators, people who are just here for the hype and the excitement, and actually pull those coins into cold storage where they start to mature. And conversely, as we come into the bull market, here's a good example in 2017, we see the exact opposite, where young coin population explodes higher. We see more of that spending from those older hands. The market has to absorb more and more coins. And as a result, we eventually get a market top getting put in. So you can see here that using a very, very simple set of tools, we can actually build up and understand what's going on in the cyclical behavior in terms of coins that are older than one year and the converse of that, which is coins that are younger than one year. And what we're going to do just before we move on to the net position change, we're going to hit save up the top here. Now you can save it. This is an existing chart for me in my chart. So if I hit save, it will save it as is. You can also hit save as. So if you want to create a new variant of this metric and keep your current one, you can essentially fork that particular workbench and start working on a new model. You can also use the save as function if you want to copy somebody else's workbench. If you see someone who shared one of their workbenches and you want to take it and continue to innovate on it, you can hit save as and it will put it into your library. 
So for the second part of this tutorial, you may see in Glassnode we have what we call the net position change metric. Now what this is trying to do, the metrics we were just looking at was the total supply. But sometimes it's a bit hard to actually observe and understand exactly what's a good number, what's a high number, what is low. It takes a bit of nuance to understand when we're looking at these base metrics. Now what's generally quite important when it comes to the way Bitcoin behaves and the overall supply dynamics is the rate of change. Are we seeing lots of coins moving into the older realm? Are we seeing lots of those coins being spent back into a young age? And this is really where the net position change metrics comes into it. And the way to think about it, it's essentially a rate of change over the last month. Over the last month, how many coins have moved into or out of one year supply? And when we compare that over time, we can see that we develop this oscillator here in blue and we can actually see relative to previous cycles, what is a high level and what is a low level. So it almost brings it into a domain that we can see it in an oscillator format, but also get good information about how many BTC are moving between older and younger coins. So the function that we're going to use here is called difference and it's abbreviated inside Workbench to diff. We open up the bracket and then we have the particular metric that we want to look at in terms of the net position change. In this instance, M3 would be the supply last active one year plotted out in BTC. Now, the second function that we have here is the period. So this is over what time frame? Now, we've set it here to 30. We can put it to whatever number that we want. But if you set this here to a period of 30, it's going to say over the last 30 days, how much has this metric changed? So it will look at today's current value. It will look back 30 days. It will calculate the difference between those two. And then it will present you with the amount of coins that have changed over the last 30 days. Now, if we put this to 90, it would be more like a quarterly change. If we did 365, it will be closer to an annual change. So you can tweak this and adjust it. And sometimes multiple periods are useful. But this is really what this metric is doing. It's taking the difference of a particular metric over some period. We input the metric that we're looking at, and then we uh, and the period that we select is that time difference between when we're looking at and when the what we want to see the change over that period of time. So here we are back in Workbench. What we're going to do is just purely look at the supply older than one year. So this is the metric that we actually care about. Now note that this is actually F1. So we're going to apply this particular net position change to F1, which is a function. You can do this both to a metric M3 or M2, or we can apply it directly to a function. So it provides us with that uh, optionality in terms of how we want to build these tools. So let's turn this onto a blue metric and we are going to have this on Y6. So this will also show up on the right hand side as a separate axis. And for oscillators like this, I often like to use the bar style chart. It provides us just that little bit of extra signal. You can kind of see it and differentiate it to our curve charts that we have plotted up. So as I mentioned in the intro, we're going to say diff. We're going to do F1, which is our supply older than one year in BTC terms, comma, 30 days. And we're going to hit evaluate and draw. And just so we don't forget, we are going to rename this because often when you build these formulas, you can very, very quickly forget exactly what this is. So this is our supply one year net position change. And you can see that we now have an oscillator that is telling us on the right hand axis 500,000 or negative 500,000 BTC. We can see that this metric goes down into negative territory when our supply last active in the background is declining. This is showing spending behavior. And we can see here back in 2013, in both of these different peaks, we had large amounts of spending that was going on, these negative values. And remember, with supply older than one year, spending is instantaneous. A coin, when it's spent from one year plus, is immediately going to become a zero age coin. Now, on the flip side, we see that these metrics start to peak very, very positive during bear markets. But remember, they must the coin must mature to the point of being one year or older. So generally speaking, the maturation process is much later in the cycle. It will typically signal closer to the middle or the end of a bear cycle once a great deal of accumulation has taken place and has been there unspent for over a year. 
So in this instance, we can look at these highly reactive negative prints as being that's a point of high spending. It's telling us that there are exiting, there are stronger hands that are exiting from the system that creates overhead supply that the market must overcome. Now, sometimes it can overcome, as we saw in 2017, where we get these large prints for extended periods of time, but eventually the probabilities of a top getting put in does start to increase. So that's really a bit of an overview of how we can use Workbench to build out some very, very simple tools, um, but really providing us with some very powerful insights in terms of spending behavior, the balance of coins between young and old, and actually comparing them to our circulating supply to give us a bit of a view on just how much supply is held by these different cohorts. So thanks for tuning in for this session. You'll find a copy of this particular workbench in the description below for this video. So if you do want to go and inspect it and save it into your own library so that you can start to play around with it and see exactly how this was calculated, you are free to do that. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this. We're going to be doing more of these workbench tutorials and we're going to slowly build up the complexity. So we really do want people to be studying this and understanding a little bit more and becoming a bit more confident with how we can use these tools to construct even more robust insights. So this is a very, very simple example, but you can see it has quite powerful results when used correctly. So thanks for tuning in for this session. Do let me know if you enjoyed it in the comments and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.